In this video, we're going to be looking at oxidation reduction reactions of organic compounds, and we'll also be looking at a few re reactions in which alcohols are prepared via reduction. To begin with, we have three reactions that we'll be classifying as either oxidation or reduction. The easiest way to identify an oxidation reaction is that it is one where an oxygen atom is added to the molecule. Reduction reaction is one where oxygen is removed. Um, not all oxidation reactions involve the addition of oxygen. Um, not all reductions involve the removal of oxygen. So that's not always going to be enough for us to identify oxidation and reduction. For example, when we look at this first reaction, we're starting with one oxygen and ending with one. So we haven't added or removed any. That means we can't use this to help us identify oxidation or reduction. But if we look at this reaction right here, we can see that we started with two oxygens and we ended with one. We've removed one of the oxygens. So we know that this is a reduction. We'll abbreviate that with a capital R in square brackets. When the number of oxygen atoms don't change, the next easiest way to identify oxidation is um, that it involves the changing of the bond order between carbon and oxygen. So a carbon-oxygen single bond gets converted to a carbon-oxygen double bond. And a reduction is the opposite of that, a carbon-oxygen double bond getting converted to a carbon-oxygen single bond. So if we look at this first reaction right here, we can see that we are converting a single bond to a double bond. That means that this is an oxidation reaction. And in our second example, we're going from a double bond to a single bond. So that means that this is an example of a reduction. There are other ways to identify oxidation reduction reactions as well, looking at the um, addition or loss of hydrogens or halogens, but these methods are usually the fastest to identify. Now let's take a look at a couple reactions that involve reduction to form an alcohol. We're gonna be starting with this molecule right here, a ketone has a carbon oxygen double bond. There are two different reagents that we could use to convert this carbon oxygen double bond into a carbon oxygen single bond or an alcohol. One reagent is called LAH. This stands for lithium aluminum hydride. LAH is an example of a hydride reagent. A hydride reagent is a source of the hydride ion H minus. The hydride ion is a really great reducing agent. The hydride ion adds itself to the carbon of the carbon oxygen double bond. So it's gonna put itself right there in that position. And in doing so, it converts the carbon oxygen double bond into a carbon oxygen single bond. In the second step of the reaction, when we add water, that water is just added to the, or one of the hydrogens from the water is added to the oxygen, and this gives us an alcohol. We could also perform the exact same conversion by using hydrogen with platinum, palladium, or nickel. The same way that we have been doing um, uh, with double bonds and triple bonds. One of the disadvantages of using this H2PT reagent is that it also, as we know, it also converts double bonds into single bonds or triple bonds into single bonds as well. So if we are interested in converting a carbon oxygen double bond to a single bond and we don't care about converting any other double bonds um, at the same time, this is a great reagent to use. If we want to selectively convert a carbon oxygen double bond into a single bond, leaving other double bonds alone, the hydride reagent is a great choice. The lithium aluminum hydride, hydride reagent, also can perform the same type of conversion on carboxylic acids, which is one right here, and an ester. An ester is a molecule that has some sort of alkyl group on the end here. Instead of an OH, it's like OCH3. We're going to draw a mechanism for this particular reaction. Remember with the hydride reagent, the active ingredient, the reactive component is the hydride ion. And as I told you, the hydride ion goes after the carbon of the carbon oxygen double bond. This breaks the pi bond of the carbon oxygen double bond, and it moves the electrons from the pi bond up onto the oxygen atom as an extra lone pair. It puts a, fo a formal negative charge on the oxygen atom. And here's the hydrogen that we added. Once this has been formed for a carboxylic acid or an ester, the carbon, um, excuse me, the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen actually come back down to recreate the carbon oxygen double bond. And in doing so, this causes the OH group, or if this was an ester, the OR group 
to leave the molecule. So that's going to give us this intermediate, which is an aldehyde. The, this aldehyde intermediate is subject to attack by a second lithium aluminum hydride. So another lithium aluminum hydride is going to come in and for a second time attack that same carbon, breaking the pi bond again, putting another negative formal charge on the oxygen atom. This time, the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen cannot come back down and reform the carbon-oxygen double bond because there is nothing that can be broken off of this particular carbon. We can't break a carbon-carbon bond or a carbon-hydrogen bond in this particular way. So at this point, it's done. It's done as much as it possibly can. And this is where we bring in our step two, H2O, which serves to protonate that O minus and gives us the alcohol product.